Welcome to a demonstration of the Integrify workflow engine with a focus on capital expenditure requests. Let's go ahead and initialize our next request. Here we have a form where I'm going to fill out several fields. I'm going to do about half of the form and then talk about the fields that I'm filling out. As you can see, the fields vary in their type. Some are free text fields, some are drop down lists, others are radio buttons. Specifically, the radio button for the capital budget here has interactivity connected to it in that as I change the answer that I put into that question, I actually get slightly different behavior from the form. I get a new field. Similarly, if I choose the facility, I get a different list of states that I'm able to choose from. So the form can update itself depending on what the user inputs into it so that you can have very dynamic forms running. Let me just fill out the last field here, which happens to be a file attachment where I can add files of any type and multiple files to track along with this request as it routes through the approval process. I've now filled out the form. I'm going to go ahead and submit it for review. Our next task is an approval task where the facility manager in this case for the region that we've specified is going to review this request and decide how it should go forward. The review can be accomplished by clicking on this link and reviewing a read only copy of the form that was just completed. Here, our manager discovers a couple of issues uh, regarding the project title and the facility and also the department that this was issued from. So we're going to go ahead and choose the option that sends this request back to the original requester and forward this request back with some comments. The requester will then get to modify the request based on their manager's feedback. They'll update the facility, the state, and the budget by 50% before sending it back to their manager for approval once again and resubmit. At this point, the request has now traveled to a different requester because the automation of the workflow depends on which particular facility we choose for this. They actually have three choices here. They have the ability to approve, send back, or deny this request, all of which activate different paths. The specific paths are actually demonstrated here on the flow view. This is a live map that follows the workflow request as it executes, and it's got color coding to show you how far this request has proceeded. If I highlight a particular task, I can see what iteration of the task I'm on, who completed this task, and in what time frame. I can do that for every interactive task that's been completed so far. Tasks that are not yet completed are shown in gray. There are also paths here that we haven't taken. They're also shown in gray. And eventually we will reach a point in this request where we hit our first logic branch. That is to say for requests that are over $200,000, we're actually going to seek the CFO's approval. Whereas if the request did not exceed $200,000, then in fact, the departmental vice president's approval would be our terminal approval. So let me go ahead, transition back here. Our facility manager will re-review. They'll see that this is in fact okay. They'll close this screen, approve this request, add an appropriate comment, and forward it to the next step. Now we're at the departmental vice president's approval. They'd have very similar choices here. What I'd like to show now, here we have an example of a modified Integrify email that can be customized for every task. The subject line has relevant details to the uh, task that's being required here. And we can provide as much or as little data to the user as is appropriate for this particular task. Here we have sort of a quick rundown of the project for the vice president, enough detail that in theory, the vice president could in fact approve this directly from the email link. So if they're familiar with this project, they could go ahead and choose one of the three options or return to the actual Integrify interface from whatever device they're using. So I'm going to model how the email links work click on approve on the same device that the user is working on. A new tab will open in their main browser. The VP will have a chance to put comments in, submit them. They'll get a confirmation that in fact, this was their choice that they made. And we will return to the dashboard and we've actually moved on to the next step. We're now at the CFO approval. We will now use the link from this main report to return to the task and we'll briefly review the request detail page. The request detail page has several useful links and elements of data. 
We have links that lead to the current tasks that we need to complete. We have links to the previously completed forms if we wish to see them in graphical format. We also have a task by task explanation of how this complete request has been run. So we have the record here that the, the uh, f original facility was West, the original department was clinical, and the original uh, budget was $200,000. It went forward to the facility manager for the Western region. They sent it back for rework, asking that the facility and department be changed. The request was updated, changed to the North facility to match the title. The state was changed. The sales department was matched to was changed to match the title as well. The budget was increased and it was sent forward to a different manager this time for the Northern facility. This manager approved it, sent it forward to the vice president of the sales department, and then it went on to the CFO based on the sum that was required here in terms of 300,000. The takeaway from this page is that all of this data is reportable. These elements can all be brought into a custom report and be used as input to report for audit or statistical purposes. If you prefer, you can also use the reporting tools that you're already using, we're happy to share the data model that we're using in the Integrify system. And this data can be exported to any other tool or system that you require. Now let's review the menus that a user has at their disposal. The administrative menu will only be displayed to users with administrative responsibility for Integrify. So most users will not see this set of menus. What most users will interact with will be the view my requests menu which will be the sum total of all requests that the user has. So even if they do not have a dashboard, they'll have access to this particular menu. It will be a unique view for every user. Every user also has access to the View My Tasks menu, which shows an up-to-date listing of the tasks that are assigned to that user, along with optional due dates if they are configured. Monitor Requests is intended for your supervisory users to be able to see any particular request or set of requests that they may want to see in the company. You can use the permission system to assign the particular workflow or set of workflows to a supervisor who has need to look over them in a read-only fashion. Manage Requests gives you the ability to manage and intervene in any request in the system. This ability is limited only to the system administrators, but you have three different functions you can perform at this level. So for this particular request, we're currently at the level of the CFO approval. The first function that the user can access from these context menus is to change the due date for a particular task. So if the task was due on the 29th, we can now move that to the 31st with a few clicks of the button. And now the task will not send reminders until that point. The next possibility is to reset a task. That is to send a task back to a previous step in the request workflow. Uh, specifically, if say the departmental vice president rejected this request based on what they knew at the time, and now there is a desire to redo this request without beginning it from the very beginning and going through all the intervening approvals. So we can actually reset the task here and put it back in the depart departmental vice president's queue for action at that level or possibly sending the request down a different path. The third possibility is to reassign other recipients to the task. If the original recipient was unavailable for whatever reason, we can add other recipients to the task who might have equivalent access and training to complete the task. As soon as we add these people to the task, they receive notifications and also have links within their user interface to complete this task at their next opportunity. The other task management feature that is available both to administrators and to regular users is delegation. Delegation can be created by each individual user to hand off tasks that would normally arrive in that user's queue to another user. So here I've created a sample delegation for my account to the account of Abby Approver for the week of February the 13th. I can also choose to delegate all my work or only specific processes uh, during that time period. And once this delegation is in place, the system will automatically divert any work that would normally be assigned to my account 
would send it over to Abby's account. Now let me show you the review of dashboards, which are configurable panels that allow a user access to specific requests as well as tracking information on how those requests are proceeding. Here we have two buttons that launch two different versions of this request, a, another button that launches a report that you can run on demand. On the right, we have key performance indicators, and you can think of these as stopwatches in the software that measure how long specific segments of the workflow are taking. On the left, we're measuring tasks that reach the CFO's desk, and on the right, we're measuring the overall approval chain for these requests. The needles here represent averages, but we can check what the specific execution time of a request is. So you can see that if you have a systemic issue with all requests being delayed or just particular requests. Down below, we have an example of a custom report which allows the user to see at a glance what requests are generated within the system and how they are proceeding through it. This is a carefully collated version of the data from the request. These are the most important pieces of data that a user might want to track, such as which particular facility, which department, and what the budget for this request is. This report is also filterable and exportable. So if I chose to filter this by the Northern facility, I can then see which requests have been circulated through that facility. Those filters are of course under the control of the report administrator. Now let me show you a more advanced capital expenditure example. This is a different version of the original form that we used, but has a grid that contains numbers and can do on the fly calculations as we enter them. I've pre-entered a few numbers already here, but within the grid, the rows and columns are being summarized in a way that allows us to see at a glance how capital expenditure and operating expenditures are going to be accounted for both during this year and during future years. But you can see how here the system is following along as I add values. It's summarizing not only um, here within the column, but it's also running a running total by year, by future year, and then by total of the request, and then summarizing what the total capital expenditures are. So here, as I add $500, so let's example, we go from $11,800 to $12,300. The last feature of the Integrify workflow system that I'd like to discuss is the ability to easily copy previously created data from an Excel spreadsheet into a workflow form. I can copy data from the spreadsheet paste it into a prepared area on the form and using some additional configuration, have that data transfer itself from the drop zone to a pre-prepared grid, which can format it as individual line items with quantity, order number, items, unit cost, total, and shipping and handling values. This is all prepared beforehand, but it makes it easier for the user to copy their data from the spreadsheet that they may have been compiling that information and then adding it to a formal Integrify request.